Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to today's podcast. I am Dr. Harshita, the Community Engagement Manager at NetSynapse, a vibrant global platform dedicated to empowering the medical community to connect, collaborate, extreme knowledge, all with the aim of revolutionizing patient outcomes. It is with great pleasure that I am hosting this informative session focused on decoding AI in healthcare with our esteemed guest, Dr. Amit Kumade, a consultant physician in diabetology, obesity, and metabolic disorders. Dr. Amit has over 10 years of experience in clinical practice with diabetology as the primary subspeciality. He holds membership in several esteemed organizations, including the Research Society for Study of Diabetes in India, American Association of Clinical Endocrinology, American College of Physicians, and Royal Society for Public Health. He is Early Career Physician Council member, ACB India Chapter. Also, he is a Joint Secretary of Diabetes Research Welfare Association, Kolkata. Dr. Amit has been associated with various patient awareness and healthcare training activities in the field of diabetology over the last eight years. Dr. Day's dedication shines through his contributions, including presentations of numerous papers and posters at both national and international conferences. Additionally, he has contributed as an author towards publications in peer-reviewed journals and book chapters. He is an associate editor at the JMIR Diabetes and a peer reviewer at various international journals. Dr. Amit's research interests are equally impressive, spanning areas like obesity, metabolic syndrome, diabetes in elderly, CGM in gestational diabetes, artificial intelligence in diabetes care, and the fascinating realm of precision diabetes care. His involvement in research landscape includes pivotal roles as both a principal investigator and co-investigator in various real-world observational studies. Adding a testament to his commendable efforts, Dr. Amit Kumar Day was honored with the Diabetes Awareness Initiative Award at Diabetes India 2020, Voluntary Faculty of the Year Award, IMACP India Chapter 2022, and JPEF 2023 Award for Improving Diabetes Care Through Technology Innovation. Dr. Amit, it's an honor to have you here with us today. Thank you very much, uh, Harshita, for the kind introduction. Uh, hello to all our viewers, to all our listeners, a warm welcome to all of you on this first episode of the podcast. Um, and uh, we are going to be hosting a series of podcasts uh, on something which is very, very important of this decade, artificial intelligence in healthcare. Um, I thank uh, the MedSynapse team for uh, taking the initiative of uh, creating this series of podcasts wherein we can discuss every aspect of artificial intelligence and try to decode and kind of demystify how AI is going to influence and impact healthcare in the days to come. So uh, once again, we look forward to very uh, interesting discussions uh, you know, in, in the days to come with some eminent faculties across the globe who shares similar insights and uh, will be collaborating with us in this podcast series with their views, with their uh, research works in the field of AI. Because uh, over the last few months, we have seen there has been rapid advances and updates in artificial intelligence happening. So uh, we really need to keep ourselves at pace. And to keep ourselves at pace, we have this podcast series for you, wherein we're gonna bring you the latest updates and some of the research developments that is having. Once again, thank you very much, Harshita, for the introduction. And we can start with, with our introductory podcast today, which is the first episode of Decoding Artificial Intelligence in Healthcare. Yes, thank you, Dr. Amit. So before we dive in, I would like to mention that we encourage your questions. Please feel free to drop your questions. In this episode, we primarily we have primarily focused on introducing the topic and there will be subsequent sessions as Dr. mentioned 
that delve deeper into various aspects. Also, this podcast will be recorded and will be available on my synapse after, after the live session is over. So let's begin with our session. Absolutely. So, uh, Doctor, we have seen that AI is gaining ground in many healthcare fields, including the detection of disease, treating long-term cases, delivering health services, and in identification of new medic medicines. So AI is driving enhanced efficiency and heightened productivity through automation. And these AI technologies have the potential to help address important health challenges too. If AI can make an impact on the space race, then why not in healthcare, right? Yeah. So Dr. Amit, how is AI improving some of the main pain points in current healthcare system? Yes, uh, thank you for the question, Harshita. And before we dwell into that question, uh, it's a proud moment for all of us. India has landed on the moon and we had the Chand Chandrayaan-3 uh, landing, uh, you know, touching the moon's surface, uh, you know, without any major hiccups. And guess what? Uh, artificial intelligence played a major role in this landing process. And if I can quote uh, uh, from where I have read this, that the lander has a detection and avoidance camera. Uh, you know, in, 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 in this particular field, they say that there is a 17 minutes of terror before the, before the lander had to, had to kind of uh, land on the surface. That needs a lot of configuration and a lot of automation. And this particular uh, lander hazard detection camera was inbuilt with AI algorithms, which made the landing on the surface of the moon a very smooth and a precise process. I think that's what we must use the term precision here. At the same time, uh, I've read that uh, the lunar rover, Pragyan, is going to be also having some uh, excellent algorithms that will help it function. So, so there we go. There we have. We have artificial intelligence taking us to the moon. And uh, yes, artificial intelligence is going to have a big impact in healthcare. It's already having an impact in healthcare. So, you know, to dwell into this question that you have asked, uh, Harshita, we need to go back a little bit and we need to understand about artificial intelligence. From where did it evolve? You know, the term was coined in 1957 by McCarthy. And since then, artificial intelligence has grown from, from its infancy and uh, let's say to its juvenile phase still. And there is a miles to go in the field of artificial intelligence. Uh, as a doctor, as a clinician, why should we know about artificial intelligence? That is also a very important thing to understand. But before that, we must also know that artificial intelligence is nothing new. And we must be able to differentiate between uh, AI, computing, and robotics. Now, we are, all, we are all using computing, right? We are all using computing in our daily practice. Even a decade back, the use of computers or the use of uh, computing, the use of mobile phones... Uh, you know, it has evolved over the over the last one or two decades. Just like that, the use of AI is going to evolve. But we must differentiate between what is computing, what is AI, and what is robotics. Now, what happened here was in the in the initial days, you know, there was uh, you know normal mild developments happening in the field of artificial intelligence. Uh, machine learning came into being, and with machine learning, there was. Uh, there were some pattern recognition algorithms which were being used in healthcare, especially in the field of radiology, dermatology, as well as in, in my field of diabetes, we, we used to use it for the retinopathy screening and detection. Uh, as this machine learning evolved into supervised and unsupervised learning, uh, there came a subset called deep learning. And deep learning had various neural networks, just like the neural networks of our brain. It had multiple neural networks, which could kind of help the, the machine learning algorithm to kind of rethink even uh, unlabeled data. So something which is not tagged or not labeled, it could read, it could analyze, and it could create an output out of it. That's how deep learning came. But then suddenly, you know, just uh, before COVID came in, in the 2019 or 2018, late 2018, you can see there came the development of generative AI. And after that, generative AI kept on building. And generative AI is basically uh, another subset of deep learning, wherein the input that you're giving in 
using natural language processing, it is giving you various outputs in the form of either text or in the form of some audio or in the form of some images in the or in the form of like videos. That was a big breakthrough in artificial intelligence. And with the introduction of generative AI, especially by 2022, when OpenAI and ChatGPT came into the into the open forum or IoT, Internet of Things, everybody started creating a hype of artificial intelligence. So first thing we need to understand as doctors is that we are not dealing with anything which is very new. This is something which has been there. It has been there. It has been growing. It has been nurtured very carefully. And now it's there for us to use it. But more importantly, it is there for us to learn it first. So with how is artificial intelligence impacting our uh, healthcare? So I told you that there is various pattern recognition algorithms and we will dwell into them. Some of them maybe in the in some of our future episodes, how it is impacting radiology, uh, the radiological diagnosis, how it's impacting uh, uh, dermatology. And even there are some fantastic algorithms which are being developed in the field of pathology. And uh, in screening of retinopathy, we have used it. In fact, I myself have got a couple of publications on that where we have seen the sensitivity of uh, you know, these deep learning algorithms in detecting diabetic retinopathy in, in patients. With generative AI, it, opened, it opens up a Pandora's box. And now we can kind of expect clinical decision support system coming out using generative AI. So yes, sky is the limit. Well, perhaps sky is no longer the limit. Beyond the sky is the limit. And it's a matter of time that we're going to have AI in every aspect of healthcare. Harshi. Yes, yes, Doctor. Uh, thank you for highlighting these uh, points. And now, uh, Doctor, uh, what challenges do healthcare professionals face when integrating AI into their workflows and how can these challenges be addressed? Yes, that is that is something that, that we are all trying to kind of uh, sort of absorb it in. So the first thing is, as clinicians, as doctors, we should come out of this wow factor and get into the how factor. That's very important, right? AI is no longer a science fiction. It's very much there. It's there for us. We need to know about it. So, I mean, initially when I started using chat GPT about a few months back, I was, I was having that wow factor. Wow. Can it really do this? I mean, how is it really doing it? Gradually you start, you know, absorbing it. And then you start questioning is how you, how is it doing it? And, how it can impact my domain or my field of practice. Now, you know, as a clinician, I've practiced over 12, 15 years. One thing that we have learned and we have evolved as a clinician is that we practice with reasoning. And that's why we call it evidence-based medicine. That's what we practice, right? So everything that we do has to have a reasoning, a scientific logic behind it, and adequate research data behind it, some clinical trials, some real-world data behind it. And then we use it on our patients. AI will be nothing different. But what is very important is we need to understand this how. So the first challenge which a doctor has to overcome is the challenge of learning and analyzing and demystifying artificial intelligence algorithms, which are being used into their clinical practice. I think that is going to be the first hurdle that as a clinician, we need to overcome. And that is the vision with which we have started this podcast series so that at least we can delve, dwell into uh, some of the deeper aspects of artificial intelligence and how it's going to have an impact in, in healthcare. Well, you need not be a coder. You need not be a programmer. You need not be a data scientist or you need not learn data science to really understand how these algorithms are working and how it is producing the output that you are expecting it to produce. We need to understand the basics of artificial intelligence. That is for sure. And I think that would go from every, every level of a healthcare practitioner, whether it's a medical student, whether it's an early career physician, whether it's a senior doctor, senior consultant, whether it's at the level of research, whether it's at the level of nursing. I think every healthcare provider will have to understand how artificial intelligence is working in the AI tools that they are going to use or they are using. That is the first hurdle. Going down the line, there is going to be a lot of hurdles in terms of biases, 
Because you see, in, in computer science, there is something called GIGO, which is garbage in and garbage out. So a lot of the output that comes out of these AI models will depend upon the inputs that is given in, right? And the input will depend upon the big data that it is gathering. Now, in healthcare, these datas will come from where? It will come from your electronic medical records, from your electronic hospital records, from the various wearables that you're wearing. You know, it could be your fit band, it could be your, uh, you know, uh, uh, it could be your uh, smart uh, ECG sensor, it could be the smart sock, and various other smart utilities that you will be wearing, your mobile phone. It will pick up all the vital parameters and that's going to transmit and all these are going to collaboratively give out the big data. And from this big data, you're going to get your input. And from that input, you will be having those inputs going into a model. Now, if you're using generative AI, it will go into a foundation model. These are the terminologies that we as doctors will have to all accustom ourselves. All uh, you know, generative AI models are based on a foundation model, like the GPT is a foundation model. And then it comes, there comes a layer of output. So that's, that's how the data is going to go from the input into the annotations layer or iteration layer, and then it's going into the output layer. So, we need to understand what input is going in and what is the output that we are expecting out of it. If the input is, is not a quality data, then the output might be biased. So bias is something that we have to encounter and we must be able to identify the bias. That would help us use these AI tools to the best of its ability. Otherwise, you will probably end up in, in a situation which most uh, people who are using chat GPT face is called AI hallucination. You'll end up with the artificial intelligence hallucination because you're not giving the right prompt and it's not giving the right output. We can take up and discuss AI hallucination maybe sometime in details and prompting is something that we need to learn. So these are some of the limitations to data. A lot of ethical limitations are gonna come in. The question who is going to be responsible for the outcome Will it be the AI? Will it be the AI provider? Will it be the doctor? A lot of other ethical questions are going to come. And I think those are the questions that we need to dwell in. So, you know, I have in mind a few very interesting people across the globe who are working on this. And we would also be requiring some very strong uh, regulations and governance at the level of, I mean, at the global level, as well as at various national levels, which would govern the AI policy and the ethics. And again, it will vary from country to country. Uh, like the Data Protection Act of US varies quite a lot from the EU and India is in the ninth stage of the GDPR Act. So just like that, we're gonna have a lot of AI policies and ethics coming in. And I think largely the government will play a very strong role. The government of each country will play a very strong role in, in creating these policies. And as clinicians, we need to really analyze these very carefully and see how it is impacting our use of that AI tool into our practice. So I think these are the initial limitations. And I mean, every every technical tool will come with limitations, but we need to we need to pick up the advantages and the disadvantages together, and we need to get along with it. Yes, Dr. Amit, thank you for uh, your comprehensive explanation. And yes, uh, this complex, uh, thank you for shedding light on the complexities that healthcare professionals encounter. Now, Doctor, uh, the integration of AI-driven tools and technologies has the potential to enhance the learning experience for aspiring medical uh, healthcare professionals. So, uh, Dr. Amit, what potential do you see for AI to revolutionize medical education and training for future healthcare professionals? Yes, I think I think that, that the prospect there is huge. It's huge. What's going, to, what's going to change is the way medicine is taught, okay? Uh, remember, when you're talking about artificial intelligence, you're talking about precision. You're talking about precision diagnosis. You're talking about precision care. You're talking about individualization of treatment, right from the patient's personal profile to perhaps the patient's genetic profile. You're talking about individualizing therapy about a patient based on his genotype or phenotype, right? So, you know, with when when you're talking about precision, and in our medical school days, we were taught medicine 
wherein everything was a diagnosis of exclusion. So you had your differentials and then you had your provisional. So you, it's, it's kind of similar. Like you have a larger set and from there you denote and you kind of derive a smaller subset. And from there you reach your diagnosis by excluding one out of the other. AI will probably follow something similar, but it would probably come wherein it will bypass this differentials that you're doing and it will kind of give you a pinpoint precision thing and you will be the person making a decision how to go about with that pinpoint uh, diagnosis or that pinpoint therapeutic decision. So try to understand that, you know, the way we practice medicine, the fundamentals would probably change with the utility of AI. So vis-a-vis, -vis, that will have an impact on the way medical education is also given. I mean, the way a, a student is taught how to kind of think the cognitive, the developments which are done in a medical school will probably also have to evolve with the use of AI. Now, when you talk about using the AI tools, the, the technology perhaps in, in medical education, I think it's huge. I think, I mean, we, we keep discussing this in, in some of the forums and I mean, I would really love to imagine somebody sitting here in India who wants to learn robotic surgery under a renowned surgeon in the US taking virtual reality classes using AI tools sitting right here from India and getting the training which you would get just by traveling down there. So I think that the, the, the prospect is huge. Using the technology itself and use incorporating the AI tools, uh, a lot is going to change in the way medical education is imparted. A lot is going to change the way we perceive medicine. A lot is going to change the way we practice medicine. So the transition generation, the ones who are in medical school today, the ones who are just passing out, is going to go through this. And I think a lot of change is going to happen. A lot of adaptability will be required at every level. Very important medical education will evolve and revolutionize. I mean, it will change like anything once AI is incorporated into it. Yes. Uh, rightly said, uh, Dr. Amit, and it's fascinating to consider uh, the profound impact that AI could have on shaping the future of medical education and training. So, uh, Doctor, in your opinion, what collaborative efforts are needed between medical experts and AI developers to ensure the responsible and effective integration of AI in healthcare? This is a very, very important question. If I kind of put it in a word, a doctor cannot be a coder and a coder cannot be a doctor. And everybody have their own line of thinking. So when you have a doctor trying to code, the, the pattern of the algorithm will not be similar if you have coder creating an algorithm for a doctor. Right, so you need a collaborative action here because you know what is artificial intelligence? It's just a wiser way of thinking, right? You have the data, you have the information, and then you're just you're just helping it to think and give you a wiser output based on whose wisdom, based on the clinician's wisdom. So it's very important if I want a clinical decision support system in my practice, I would prefer that my clinical experience and my uh, ways of analyzing, you know, something is taken into consideration while the algorithm works on. So there would be a generalized segment and there would also be an individualized LLMs. And I think, I mean, there are options wherein, I mean, I think it's already there. People can kind of create their own LLMs based on certain platforms. So I think, yes, a huge collaboration will be required between the developers and the clinicians again, because you need a custom tailored algorithms in your clinical decision support system. Something that will aid in your practice, something that will add value to your practice that is very important. Now, one might ask here that, you know, if I, if, if I really need a clinical decision support system here, what will I be thinking? I mean, what is going to be my role? Well, just think it over as a clinician. I mean, even standing today, 70% of the work that we do is a repetitive task to some extent. I mean, if you look at the other fields, I mean, it is repetitive task. In medicine, 
the percentage is still less because every individual is different, every patient is different, and there is always a huge segment to use your wisdom, your knowledge, and your experience for that matter, and no one can take that away as a clinician. But still, we spend so much of work on time on paperwork, on the logistics, and on repetitive tasks when we attend one patient after the other, whether it's in the inpatient or the outpatient department. Imagine a clinical decision support system that can make this repetitive work easy for you. What it's going to do is going to kind of help you dwell on those aspects of patient care, which you would not have been able to dwell on, given that limited 10, 15 minutes time that you're giving to your patients. So it will help you invest more time into your patients, more time for each patient. That would actually help an individual improve the quality of care and you know bring better clinical outcomes. And coming back to your question, a good developer in collaboration with a doctor creating a structured and an individualized LLM or an algorithm for that particular hospital or for that particular clinic will just be the icing on the cake because it's just going to be tailor-made for you, making your life much easier, minimizing medical errors, at the same time, help you provide better clinical outcomes. Yes, thank you, Dr. Amit, for sharing your perspective and for highlighting the importance of uh, bridging the gap between technology and medical expertise. Uh, Dr. Amit, there are a few questions that we have received from the community side. So the first question is, could you share uh, insights into how AI is enhancing the efficiency of admin administrative tasks? reducing paperwork and streamlining healthcare operations. So I think this is what we were just talking about. You know, if there is a repetitive task, uh, I think AI can take that up very well. If this, if there is a task that, that would uh, probably require a variable output uh, at this point of time, even with generative AI in place and with the model still developing, I would still say it would require a lot of human connect and a lot of human intervention. But where the output is direct, like most of the paperwork, most of the history taking work, I mean, history taking can, can be beautifully done by AI. I mean, you can have a patient narrate and you can have the gen AI convert that into text in your EMR or EHR. I think that can be beautifully done. Uh, we have used some various AI pilots of uh, recording Zoom meetings. So I think the same technology can be used in, um, you know, in text to uh, a voice to text uh, kind of conversions using generative AI. So those things can be beautifully done using artificial intelligence. And what it will do is that it will take care of a lot of the administrative burden out of the of the healthcare staff, which 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 is actually a burden. And you know we have done we have done some certain surveys amongst physicians in India, um, especially the ones practicing in hospitals. And you know that has shown that. In the context of physician burnout, the majority of the burnout, one is of course because of the huge patient load that they have to encounter. Uh, uh, but more than that, it's the paperwork and the administrative work that contributes to the burnout in a greater way. So I think that can be eased off using artificial intelligence uh, tools in, in clinical practice and in EHRs and in EMRs. So yes, a uh, huge prospect there. You need to identify the right tool that is ideal for your system, incorporate it, learn how it's working. That's again, a very important aspect. I mean, as clinicians, as doctors, you should always ask that question, how it's working, learn about it, analyze it, understand and be satisfied whether that's ideal for you or not, whether you want a better version of it, how you can get a better version of it, how you can help it learn and relearn. I think that would be the essence of how AI will will grow in healthcare amongst clinicians. Yes. And uh, Dr. Amit, now let's talk about AI's impact uh, in accelerating the identification of novel treatments and therapies. So how do you see AI influencing the future of medical research? That's the another aspect which is very fascinating. I mean, the other day I was just reading about how, uh, you know, AlphaFold has evolved, you know, in the in the Google's DeepMind and AlphaFold is basically an AI technology that kind of 
picks up the pattern of protein folding and unfolding. And if you know that protein unfolding and folding kind of, it's the building blocks of life and the entire revolution uh, of, uh, of any disease, any drug trial revolves around how a protein is folded and unfolded. So using artificial intelligence, pattern recognition, or even gen AI and various other technologies, the alpha fold, and now I think they have alpha fold two, which kind of augments this protein folding and unfolding cascade. And that kind of accelerates the way, uh, you know, you can analyze and anticipate a protein structure. So I think the prospect there is huge in terms of drug trial. Alpha fold is just one example, and there's so many other, uh, you know, research which is going on in this particular field. And so drug trials are going to get enhanced. The, the various phases are going to get enhanced. Medical research will definitely see a new limelight with these AI uh, technologies, spe especially I would say generative AI tools being used, gen AI being used. In, into that. And the other aspect, you know, when we talk about medical research, we also talk about medical writing. And I think there's been a lot of hype in that field as well. I mean, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm an associate editor in one journal and I'm a peer reviewer in a few other journals. And we understood that the reservation was that, you know, people could resort to using a gen AI platform uh, kind of to, to script their article. And it would be very difficult to kind of uh, even trigger whether there is a plagiarism there or not. So most of the research uh, papers came out with kind of a disclaimer that if you're using an AI tool for writing your work, you need to kind of uh, kind of uh, give a disclaimer which tool you have used and how much you have used and what is the percentage of AI use in your in your writing. And I think it's a fair enough thing, but you know. Uh, uh, I don't see a disadvantage there. I see it rather more as an advantage. Imagine AI tools uh, will help you analyze and summarize the papers that you are supposed to read. I mean, when we when we sit down to write a paper, I mean, you take out, you know, the so many papers out from the PubMed or a Google Scholar, and it takes so many days for you to go through them. Review of literature takes such a long time. And then you kind of collate and then you kind of come out with your own manuscript. So at least the review thing and the summarizing thing can be done by, by using AI tool. And I think that is that is fascinating in which it is going to save your time. Writing, yes. I mean, where I see this going is that the writing tools are only going to be supportive tools. Eventually, people will be credited for their original work. And that's going to stand stand good. So all these AI tools are going to be always there to supplement, to augment your writing work. Uh, it will have some limitations. We know that. I mean, you need to kind of uh, be able to differentiate. Sometimes if you ask uh, AI tools to kind of relate to certain uh, uh, researches, there has been some AI hallucinating happening and then some uh, research that doesn't exist, those kind of outputs have come. But I think those are all the learning phase and uh, the initial hiccups that any AI model will face, any gen AI model will face. But overall in medical writing, I think the use of AI tools are going to be a big boom. In the field of clinical trials, it's going to be a huge asset. And we can only, we can only imagine drug trials happening very fast and medical research progressing in a, in a more uh, uh, bigger way than it had been in the last decade. Yes, thank you, Dr. Amin, for sharing your, your perspective on the role of AI in shaping the future of medical research. Now, uh, let's talk about the complex interplay between AI and human interaction in healthcare. Uh, how could the implementation of AI in healthcare lead to a reduction in human interaction? I would say it would rather increase human interaction. But yes, there would be uh, one very important aspect that needs to be addressed here, and that would be the ethical aspect of AI. That is, uh, you know, if you have an AI tool or a virtual assistant addressing the patient, by definition of Turing law, the patient would not be able to differentiate whether it's a real human interaction or an AI tool interaction. So there would be a question of ethics coming in there. And I think that is a, that is a segment that needs to be uh, dealt with in a very sensitive 
and in in a very proper way with with the right frame of mind and with the right structures and with the right policies but if you say that artificial intelligence will actually give us more time to increase our human interaction and i would love to have an ai tool into my practice which would take up my repetitive work sum it up in say 5 to 7 minutes and that will give me another 10 to 12 minutes it will help me in interacting with my patient understanding the patient's comfort zone creating that zone of empathy some things which as clinicians we often want to do but because of the burnout and because of the work load we are unable to do that especially if you are working in a resource limited setting uh i think that's where ai is going to actually augment human to human interaction and it will only be for the better Yes, yes. And it's it's clear that while AI is poised to revolutionize various aspects of healthcare, the fundamental importance of human contact and empathy remains integral to patient care. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. And uh, the advancements in technology should complement rather than replace the essential human touch that defines the patient doctor relationship. Yeah, so I think uh, I think this is one aspect that most clinicians would have at their back of their mind that would I be replaced? I mean, if not clinicians, I would say nurses would have, paramedics would have, physician assistants would have, and I think that is that is somewhere we need to understand that how we are going to leverage the use of AI, and once and to understand how you're going to leverage the use of AI. You need to understand how these AI algorithms are working. So again, I said, we need to all start with the question, how it's working, why it's working, and how it's giving me that output. Once you're able to decide for that and learn and kind of extrapolate uh, knowledge out of that, I think it's going to help you make AI tools a friend rather than looking at it as a competitor or as a foe, something that is there to replace you. Well, it's not going to be that. AI will be there as a fascinating tool to augment your practice, to help you, uh, you know, reach and achieve better clinical outcomes. But this is my my opinion and this is my personal viewpoint. And over this podcast series, we're going to get multiple viewpoints coming in from across the globe, perhaps on this point itself. I feel that AI will always and always need a human backup. And... AI will not be replacing physicians or any clinician. But AI will definitely be there to be leveraged. And as a clinician, you don't want to be left out. You want to be the person who's going to be leveraging the use of AI with, for better clinical outcomes in your practice. And in this podcast series, you know, we're going to bring this every fortnight to you. And in every, in every session, we're going to try and bring you some interesting uh, viewpoints on these various aspects that we just spoke about, you know, in terms of medical research, in terms of the ethics of AI, in terms of this million dollar question, whether AI will replace clinicians or not, in terms of how we can learn prompt engineering, how a doctor can uh, explore prompting uh, using chat GPT or any other, uh, you know, generative AI foundation model. And I think that that would be really helpful to many of our listeners and viewers out there, which might intrigue you to use and explore artificial intelligence tools into your practice. Yes, and uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Amit, for sharing your insights on these uh, on this very essential topic. And uh, now we have arrived towards the end of today's session. So we extend our sincere thanks to you, Doctor, for joining us today. So once again, once again, to all our viewers, uh, we'll be coming to you every fortnight with this podcast series, and we'll try to highlight the various aspects of uh, of of healthcare. So, and once again, thank you to for MedSynapse for collaborating with this fantastic initiative. I will invite all our viewers, listeners, you can share your thoughts through the MedSynapse platform as to which aspect and which topic of healthcare you want us to discuss, and. I will try my best to bring you some of the top minds in the field across the globe on this platform, uh, wherein we can discuss these very finer details of artificial intelligence 
And eventually, the goal is it will help us decode the artificial intelligence use in healthcare. Thank you once again for joining us today. Thank you, Harshita, for inviting me today. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Dr. Amir. The, uh, these sessions will uh, indeed enrich our understanding of AI's impact on healthcare. And uh, huge thank you to everyone for tuning in and actively participating. We are excited to announce that uh, Dr. Amit will be joining us again on September 4th for our next episode, where we'll delve deeper into the same topic with more insights and captivating information. Make sure to stay tuned and be a part of this conversation. And before we conclude, I urge you to explore the MedSynapse platform our vibrant hub that's redefining the healthcare landscape. I'll see you soon again. Bye-bye.